Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to how the US transports its nuclear weapons. Can't be an easy job. I mean, if you're someone who's involved in this, it's got to be quite stressful, right? I mean, nuclear weapons transporting them. Yeah, it just, I don't know. Obviously, there's a lot of safety features, I assume, and maybe they're not fully intact when they're being transported. But whatever it is that you're transporting, whether it's, like, is it like uranium and stuff? Or just all those toxic things. Oh, it's got to have a risk factor to it. Um, but we're going to check this out and see because I don't really know how it goes. I don't think many humans know how this sort of stuff works. So, yeah, we're going to learn about it and see how this goes. And maybe if it's spoke about, like, if it's a dangerous job or not, I don't know if it'll be mentioned. But I assume it's a dangerous job. But maybe there's features involved and things that stop it from being dangerous. But, yeah, I assume it is. But, yeah, let's check this out and learn a little bit about a very niche topic. The United States has 5,244 nuclear weapons and a whole bunch of different ways to move them. Some can be fired from the ground, others from submarines. Some can be dropped from planes and others are just collecting dust. But all of these systems for moving nuclear weapons are systems for deploying them. As in, that's how we move them from here in Montana to here where the bad people are. Oh, they oh, so they have to fly them. But what about when we need to transport nuclear weapons without blowing them up? Well, it turns out that moving a warhead from one part of the United States to another is like a whole thing. So, you know the drill. We'll explain the thing, and then we'll tell you to go buy something, and then about 2% of you will buy it, and then I'll give my writer Ben some money to go buy more croissants, which he needs to live. Um, here we go! Nuclear warheads wait, in the what? United States live here. In the 450 or so... So they definitely put them on a specific area. Like, this side, this area here gets a lot more for some reason. I guess because there's less people. That would make a bit of sense, but I don't know missile silos in Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, and North Dakota, with a few spread out in other states. But throughout their lives, these warheads also sometimes need to be here, 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 or here. And at this point, you probably have the same question that I did when I started writing this video. Why exactly are we moving nuclear warheads in the first place? It's not like we're using them. This must only happen like every few decades. And you'd be right if you just replaced every few decades with several times a week, which I guess means that you weren't very right at all. What? The US Department of Energy moves warheads all the time, and it is precisely because we aren't doing anything with them that they have to be moved so often. You see, the delicious plutonium center of every nuclear warhead has an expiration date, a point past which it won't detonate reliably. And the problem is, we don't really know when that expiration date is. So instead of rolling the dice on World War III, the Department of Energy has started the process of recycling and replacing the plutonium in each of these warheads, and that means bringing them from their silos to one of these locations for disassembly, reassembly, maintenance, or testing. But the question what? is, how do you get a warhead from here to here safely multiple times a week? Surely we don't just bring a nuclear bomb onto a public interstate highway and... No, we do do that, don't we? Yes, in fact, here is a map of the interstates that the Department of Energy uses to transport their warheads. But it's not quite that simple because bringing a nuclear bomb onto a public interstate highway requires a carefully coordinated operation that is almost entirely classified, except for the fact that this Department of Energy nuclear warhead transportation training video ended up on YouTube somehow, and now I can tell you exactly how it works. <laughs> The Jesus. warhead itself is first loaded into one of these. I know one of these, you might be saying. That's called a truck. But oh, dear simple viewer, you have once again been fooled by the US Department of Energy Office of Secure Trans- It's not just a truck, it can, can, it can turn into a, a spaceship or something like that, right? Let's see. Transportation, because that is no simple truck. That is a US safeguards transport. Oh, I was and close. this grainy picture is actually one of the only verified photos of one in existence. Damn. While they're designed to look like a typical 18-wheeler with no recognizable markings and an ununiformed driver, they are anything but. The entire truck is bulletproof with 12-inch steel doors, invulnerable tires, and can sit directly in the middle of a fuel fire for up to 60 minutes without the cargo taking any damage. Holy the axles will explode if an attacker tries to tow it, and the entire trailer will fill itself with a rapidly expanding foam if the truck goes off axis. It's also equipped with various ways to kill you, the details of which the Department of Energy still refuses to disclose, what? though independent journalists have found good evidence for at least two. It can electrocute you to death, and by reading through the DOE's contract with an Australian arms manufacturer from 2005, we're pretty sure that it has a robotic 40 millimeter turret that is designed to quote, distribute large quantities of ammunition over a large area in an extremely <laughs> short time frame. What so, no, it's not really a truck. But even with its 
fancy foams and turrets, this truck-looking thing is only one part of moving the warhead. Every safeguards transporter moves as part of a convoy alongside two or three other unmarked and armored emergency response vehicles, one of which acts as the convoy's command center, an aerial support which can conduct surveillance, or, like every other part of the convoy, kill you super dad. Each one of these vehicles is operated by armed OST agents, which is a federal agency you're probably not familiar with, but all you really need to know is that you probably shouldn't try to steal one of their cars. Every single one of these agents has Q clearance, the highest level of clearance that the Department of Energy can issue, and they also have the authority to directly enforce 28 federal laws, most of which allow them to, you guessed it, kill you. These uh, agents can also, in the geez. event of an emergency- I mean, I get it, right? Because it's a very high risk thing. Like if you crash or whatever, it many people will die and it explodes of course so i guess that's why there's all these measures but god damn that is kind of scary because they're just driving on public roads i mean flipping hell what's called a national security area which essentially allows them to put any non-federal land in the united states under the control of the department of energy regardless of who owns it so these agents empowered to kill you and steal your house escort the safeguards transporter along a classified predetermined route which is monitored at all times by the emergency control center in albuquerque this center is responsible for contacting all of the local law enforcement departments along the route to give them a sort of vague message about a special mission that they're not allowed to know about and definitely shouldn't mess with. In the event that local police do encounter the convoy, tensions might be a little high given that both parties have guns and one of them has a nuclear bomb. Oh, so... Damn, so the police... Okay, the police would even know... I guess it doesn't make sense because they're like a public... They're public, so I guess, yeah, they just want to keep it that secretive that not even the police will know, but... That's a funny thing. Like, imagine them coming in head to head. Like, what do you do in that situation? Probably going to be explained now, but... So the emergency control center can give both parties what's called a sign countersign, with police state a code word and the OST agents respond with another code word. And all of these elements and procedures okay. need to come together flawlessly in order to get the cargo from point A to point B. So it's a good thing that our nuclear warheads are in the hands of an agency that truly does not mess around. Unless you consider drinking on the job messing around, or threatening to kill each other messing around, or being severely understaffed and not having the money for weapons training anymore messing <laughs> around. But they sure don't seem so, and uh. I'm not in the business of disagreeing with people who, again, can legally kill me and take my house. Anyway, it would seem that I have once again written a video that probably wouldn't have been possible if I were not oh, using NordVPN. This ad, yeah, this these, this channel does short videos, right? Well, there we go. But it is a little 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 sort of um, topic that is interesting. I mean, it's not something I think about that often. To say I probably don't think about it ever, to be honest. But um, 443 tensions might be a little high, given that both parties have guns and one has a nuclear bomb. What? Why is he... F why are they get? Why is he getting so turned on by a line? <laughs> it's just... It's just the... It's, what the fuck? I, li I live in... I, I, I live how France... Okay, I thought it said I live in France. I live how... I guess you mean love. I love how France was chosen as the bad guys. I was confused by that. I was thinking, wait, is this going back to like World War Two? But... They didn't bomb France in World War Two, so, um, and obviously because Nazi, the Nazi took over France. All that, I don't need to flipping explain it. I don't need to explain it. I know what I meant. Um, but what about the bricks? Did you know the United States government has very special bricks to build fortifications to withstand nukes and heavy radiation? Said bricks are a massive state secret. No one knows how they're made. Right? Okay, I have no idea what bricks they are, but the more you know, I mean, technology is crazy nowadays. You can pretty much do anything you want. I mean. They put they can probably make like like bricks that just rebound so you shoot it and it just the bullet or the missile or whatever just rebounds off it and it just comes back in your direction and bang you're done. But um <laughs> I mean I'm joking, but there probably will be something like that soon. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reaction. And if you work in this job, let me know what it's like. Although I assume you're probably not gonna say that, or you'll be lying. Um uh, but yeah, until next time, like subscribe and peace.